Good morning to you and welcome to St. George's at Wilton. Thank you for joining us today. Now, I'm aware from our YouTube viewing numbers that not everyone who joins us online has traditionally attended St. George's Church, which is wonderful. So if you're a visitor to our online congregation, please may I say a special welcome to you. We'd love to hear from you, either by joining us after the service on Zoom or by emailing us. But regardless, as if you're online with us for the first time, or you've been at St. George's since the year dot, everyone is an appreciated part of our gathering together. Wherever, whenever, and however we are, welcome. I don't know how your week has been. I hope it's been good. It's certainly been yet another week of changes, more relaxation and planned relaxation of lockdown restrictions, but also of sadnesses, particularly as we reflect upon the stabbings in Reading and our thoughts and prayers being with the bereaved, the injured and the traumatised and of course our emergency services. Whatever the ups and downs of our times, whatever the ups and downs of your week, we can still rejoice in proclaiming together that the Lord is here and his spirit is with us. So join with me as we worship him in spirit and in truth.
in our confession, we acknowledge that so often our lifestyles, our actions, our choices, our decisions are bounded by self-interest, are held captive by selfish values. We have not always lived in ways that reflect God's love for all. There are times when prejudice and ignorance have caused us to judge others as less important, less capable, less whole than ourselves. Gracious God, release us and grant us mercy. We have not always lived as people assured of our place in God's heart. There are times when despair has been our refuge and we have turned from God's promises. Gracious God, release us and grant us hope. We have not always lived as followers of Jesus. There are times when the paths to wealth and power have been more attractive than the longer roads of justice, peace and tolerance. Gracious God, release us and grant us courage. We have not always lived as people of the resurrection. There are times when we have only seen the world as a place of threat and brokenness, forgetting God's creative genius. Gracious God, release us and grant us wisdom. In quietness, we remember those thoughts, actions and words that have marred your image in us, hurt others and damaged the world. God has heard the confession of our hearts and minds. In Christ we are set free. Thanks be to God. Amen. And war
reading from Job chapter 42. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now, and I will speak. I will question you, and you shall answer me. My ears have heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. The second reading from Habakkuk, chapter 3. The prayer of Habakkuk the prophet. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Saviour. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading started from the closing chapter of the book of Job. Now to make context of it, we need to have the backstory. We need to go to the beginning of the book of Job. And so here it is, we have Job. Job is described as upright and blameless. He's a good guy. Now not only is he a good guy, Job is mega rich. He has 7,000 sheep, he has 3,000 camels, 500 oxen, 500 donkeys, servants wall to wall. This guy has got everything. He is the Bill Gates of the ancient world. The opening chapter describes Job as the greatest man amongst all the people of the East. He's a father, he has seven sons and three daughters. He's a religious man. Every day he went to the temple, he sacrificed to God. He's a good family man, a good parent. Every day he prayed for his children. His wealth, his health, his prosperity and his popularity, they must surely have indicated a blessing from God. And that's how people would have seen it. Job had everything. He was so blessed by God, they would say. But then the question is asked, what if? What if all these blessings were taken away? What if Job lost absolutely everything? Would Job still love God? Would Job still pray? Now then, even if you don't have 3,000 camels or you don't have 500 donkeys parked out on your drive, it raises the question for all of us, how would, how do we respond to God if everything we have is taken away? My focus today was going to be, where is God in the tough times? But I think the more important focus, the more important question is, where are we in the tough times? Anyway, let's see where Job is. Because he's having a bad day and his week is about to get worse. For those of a certain age who may recognise uh, what this uh, illustration is a little bit like a Brian Ricks farce. So here we have it, it's Monday morning, 
Enter stage left, a messenger comes rushing on and says, Sir, we've been attacked. All the oxen have been stolen. Oh, your 500 donkeys have been nicked along with them, and the attackers killed all the servants that were with them. And no sooner has that messenger finished speaking, when another messenger comes rushing on and says, Sir, all the sheep have been killed. They were struck by lightning. Oh, and all the shepherds got frazzled to a cinder as well. And just then another messenger arrives. Sir, there's been another attack. All the camels have been stolen and all your servants have been murdered. Whew, it can't get any worse, can it? Well, yes, it can. Another messenger comes running up. Sir, all your family, all your sons and daughters, they're at a party at your eldest brother's house. When a hurricane struck the building, the walls blew in, the roof collapsed, and they're all dead. Now, Job's response is one that I commonly repeat in the liturgy at the entrance of a funeral service. His response is that we bring nothing into the world, we take nothing out of the world, that the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Simple words to remember, aren't they? The Lord gives.
Now in the comfort of our own homes, let us settle to our time of prayer. Eyes may be closed or open to see the images on the screen, but whether eyes are closed or open, whether hands are closed or open, we open our hearts and minds to our Heavenly Father as we pray together. The response to the words when I say, God of all hope, is, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you are our rock in whom we place our trust. You are our hope and we come before you today to praise you and to thank you for all the blessings you bestow upon us. In our broken world where unrest, uncertainty, inequality leading to violence abounds, help us to stand firm and never lose sight of the love and care you offer to us if we are open to receive it. God of all hope, hear our prayer. We pray for our Queen and the monarchy, for all in positions of authority and especially for all members of our government. We ask you to guide them that they work together, not against each other, so that wise and right decisions for the good of the nation are made at this very difficult time. Bless all leaders of religious groups that as places of worship slowly open, the pace is right and everyone is safe. We are people who live in hope and we give thanks that we are blessed with seeds of desire to work always for what is beautiful, good and true. A tender flame of optimism, optimism burns within us and with confidence in your love, mercy and the power of the Holy Spirit, there is the possibility of fulfilment. During the past weeks, many hopes have been dashed. There has been much sorrow and worry. Loving Lord, continue to hold us close and though battered and bruised, nurture in us the flame of hope. God of all hope, hear our prayer. We pray for those who may have mislaid their hope and for whom life has little purpose. We hold before you the isolated, the lonely, those who have no home, no job, no loving relationship. But as they meet with acts of care and kindness, may they feel supported and restored. We pray for all who are unwell, those struggling with the virus itself or the aftermath of it, for those whose treatment has been delayed, for all medical staff who are being asked to do so much when they need rest. We pray for families and friends who are grief-stricken by the death of loved ones. We will have a moment of reflection to offer to God loved ones whose earthly life is over, perhaps ending too soon, but who are now at rest in the richer life of heaven. Compassionate God, we ask you to surround all who mourn with your comforting love. Give them hope and courage as they take each step into a new life without the physical presence they miss so much. God of all hope, hear our prayer. We pray now for ourselves and the well-being of our family here at St George's. The building is so pleased that it may offer itself to be used for prayer again. And we look forward to the time when our beautiful building is further enriched by the presence of a joyful congregation, the sound of the bells, the delight of organ music and the singing of hymns. We give thanks to all who have enabled us to stay strong in faith and fellowship. We give thanks for all the clergy and laity who continue to serve us so well during the vacancy and throughout this anxious time. Their spiritual support is so good. We pray that through all the delays and uncertainty, someone is being guided to come and lead our ministry team. But until that time, in the coming weeks, may we continue to pray for each other, laugh together and live with hope in our hearts. We end our prayers with the words of Oliver Goldsmith. Hope like the gleaming tapers light adorns and cheers our way, and still as darker grows the night, 
emits a brighter ray. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and if you're with us in real time i.e. it's Sunday morning rather than later in the day or week on YouTube catch up then please do enjoy coffee and a live chat with us on zoom after the service now one thing that hasn't changed is that in the absence of virtual refreshments we provide zoom you provide your coffee we meet again next Sunday at 10 a.m. Catherine Howes will be preaching and I will be leading us in Holy Communion. Till then, stay safe, stay well, and as I always say very importantly, stay connected with each other. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, may the Lord be gracious to you, may the Lord impact your lives with the light and power of his love, may the Lord give you his peace, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and your loved ones this day and evermore. Amen. Let's share together in the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Please don't rush off. Zoom will start shortly. But when you do go, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.